Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So today we have got a garden protection video, right? You guys know that most of my videos are about, you know, knives, knife making, knife sharpening, you know, tools, all that kind of stuff. But it just so happens that my wife is a big gardener, which means that I guess I'm kind of a big gardener also. I'm more of the, um, you know, fence it, till it, keep an eye on it, water it when, you know, she's busy, you know, that kind of guy versus the, you know, make decisions on what to plant, where to plant, how much to plant, all that kind of stuff. So I guess maybe I am more of a garden, garden enabler. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's a new term. Anyways, so <coughs> we have got a garden out there. It's, I don't know, I mean, I guess it's a, you know, a good sized garden. It's about the size of the shop. Um, and as soon as, I mean, you guys know if you garden, as soon as you put in a garden, right, everything wants to eat it, right? Which wouldn't be such a bad thing if they were eating it at the right times, you know? So sparrows like to get into the, the green bean, um, not only the, the seeds if they kind of come up, but also, you know, the young shoots. Well, if they eat that young shoot before the, the plant gets big, well then, you know, you, then you don't get any beans. I mean, a little bit later on in the season, if they want to come grab a couple of bites, you know, I'm okay with that. But at the beginning of the season, sparrows need to be controlled. Um, rabbits, rabbits are a big one. Cottontail rabbits, they will come in and decimate a garden like that. So for, you know, cottontail rabbits, I rely on fencing. We've got like uh, two or three layers of fencing around the entire garden. And then I use the, the box traps. <coughs> Excuse me, the, um, well, you guys have seen, the, uh, well, I've got a video on it, the rabbit trap. It's, uh, um, it's a box trap made out of old privacy fencing. Um, and it's a live trap and it works really good. <clears throat> the mice, I haven't really had all that much of a problem with. And so I haven't really, uh, you know, laid into them at all. Jackrabbits, uh, they kind of stay out with the fencing along with the cottontails. The antelope that we've got running around here, they stay out of it, you know, with the fencing and everything. But there's one little critter that doesn't care about fences and will come in and chew the crap out of everything, right? And you'll have to see him here in a second. That, that is garden enemy number one right now, okay? This is, I mean, he might look cute and cuddly and everything, and they are kind of cute and they are kind of fun to watch, you know, run around the yard, but not in the garden. Stay out of the garden. Okay, so that's a picture of what we're after. This is Wikipedia's, is there too much of a glare there? Uh, if there is too much of a glare, because well, maybe you got stuff on the lens. Or maybe it's just the, the lighting. Uh, anyway, so we have got 13 line ground squirrel, okay? Um, uh, call him a striped gopher. Um, a buddy of mine calls him a 13 striper, um, you know, Call them public enemy number one, right? So this is the size of them, okay? They're six and three quarters to 11 and five eighths inches. Uh, I would call that overall length, including the, uh, well, I don't know that I've ever seen one that was almost 12 inches long without the tail. Um, their head's an inch to an inch and five eighths diameter. Their weight is three and seven eighths to nine and a half ounces. Um, let's see, that is their range. Uh, you know, they, they eat seeds, they eat, um, uh, let's see, primary diet includes grass and weed seeds, caterpillars, grasshoppers, and crickets, but it may also eat mice and shrews. Um, what I've seen that it eats is um, green beans, of course, because, well, what doesn't like green beans? Um, the squash plants, the zucchini plants, um, I think my wife said the arugula, it was getting into that. Um, I think pretty much whatever it can get its hands on, it'll eat. <clears throat> so, um, in the past I've tried like the little bitty spring-loaded gopher traps. They, honestly, I haven't got, I don't got them to work. I've tried rat traps with peanut butter. That works, but I don't really care for that because those are kind of a 
pretty much whatever lands on that trigger to eat the peanut butter, it's going to die or, you know, going to get slammed by that, that trap. And I really like those Victor rat traps for like squirrels in the attic or, you know, things that are in more of a kind of a controlled environment where the environment determines the catch. Um, so like if you've got squirrels in an attic, right? Um, Pretty much the only thing that's going to be in that attic is squirrels, uh, except for you going up there to check on them, right? So if you place a, a rat trap in that situation, the only thing you're going to catch is that squirrel, okay? In this situation, in an open garden, you're going to catch no matter what comes along and, you know, touches it. So if, uh, you know, a robin or another bird, you know, gets on there, I've set mice traps out in our old garden quite a few times until I started catching too many uh, sparrows and other birds. And then I quit, quit using the, the spring-loaded type traps like that. I've never really been a big snare uh, type guy because I thought that they were kind of the same way, that they were um, indiscriminate killers. But now studying them up on them, um, I found out I was completely wrong. So... Now that we know enemy number one, and now that we know, you know, why I'm doing this is to protect the garden. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, probably thank the fellows that helped me out quite a bit, whether they know it or not. The first one is the Meat Trapper on YouTube. That dude is freaking amazing when it comes to trapping, right? He's the one that taught me how to make my, my box traps for my rabbits. Um, and he's got a whole bunch of stuff on snares and traps and everything on his YouTube channel. Apparently, he's got a big Patreon channel. I haven't uh, visited Patreon yet, so I can't tell you about that. But the YouTube channel is freaking amazing. Um, and then one of the books that he suggested was by Newt Sterling, uh, Snaring for Survival, if I remember right. Those are probably the two primary places that I've learned about this. Um, I've also picked up another couple of books and then, you know, YouTube videos from, from other folks also. My big takeaway on this is that snares, um, like I said, I thought that they were very indiscriminate killers, and that has not been proven to be the case. I caught, uh, caught my third um, one of these ground squirrels this morning, and so we are going to go ahead and make up a new snare and then go put it out there. <clears throat> but uh, of the three that I've caught so far, and granted we've got quite a bit, quite a Quite a bit fewer ground squirrels now than what we did last season or what we had at the beginning of this season because I have been after them with the old slingshot and I think uh, I think I've gotten 10 or 11 of them with the slingshot so far and then a couple of them snared and you know so there's not a whole lot of them um, around left but like I said there I caught one this morning so we got to remake that snare okay so first thing um, is I'm using these snares around the garden, okay? The rest of the yard, um, I honestly, I don't really care if there's, you know, a half a dozen or maybe even a dozen of them in the rest of the yard. It seems like a half a dozen or a dozen, that seems to be okay. Once you start getting over that, then they start getting into the roots under the trees. They start getting into the chicken run, you know, to get the chicken food. They start really tearing after the garden, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this isn't a you know, annihilate the species type of thing. This is more of a control and keep them away from the spots that, that I don't want them. So anyway, so the, the ground squirrel this morning, it was caught with the, uh, I guess we don't need that anymore. It was caught with the, the wire was underneath an armpit and then around the neck. So this way right here, right? The first one I caught was the same way. And then the, the second one I caught, it was the only one that I caught uh, completely around the neck. All three of them were alive when I got to them. Now, granted, this is also a situation where, you know, the gar I mean, where I'm setting the traps is, uh, you know, I mean, it's 40 feet from where I'm standing right now. So I check them several times a day, you know, because I don't want something that's caught to be sitting there forever. But I also like the fact that it hasn't killed them yet because what happens if I do catch something that I don't want to, then I can just cut it loose. So that's enough about all the snares and everything, or, you know, the, the why and what for and all that kind of stuff. So now let's get into building. 
Okay, so we will start by showing um, my first successful snare. Uh, I'm, I'm in. Okay, so what this is, let's turn that light back on. What this is, is a fishing leader. All right. And this is the first one that, uh, that I made a catch with. Okay, it's got a swivel. Even with the swivel and the extension line and everything, look how beat up and twisted and kinked that line is. Okay, had that been um, something like, you know, just a standard wire like this, I honestly don't think that that ground squirrel would have been there when I got to him because as kinked as this is, he'd have worked hard in that, twisted it, and then broke it off and then run off, right? Now this is a um, uh, this is a lock on here that I'll show you how to make here in a second. But anyway, this is the first successful snare, and it is all twisted up and beat up. All right. Now, so that right there is the first reason why. Um, I don't particularly want to use, you know, the regular, you know, regular wire. The second reason is, is that this stuff isn't flexible enough for these little ground squirrels, right? I mean, you saw their, um, their weight on Wikipedia was three to 10 ounces. That's not a whole lot of, of, of weight to be, you know, closing a loop on a snare. And this stuff, even the five pound braking strength, is just too it's too stiff it won't make a flexible enough loop if you look at a, a regular production snare this is one that I got from uh, southernsnares.com um, it's 330 seconds um, it's 7 by 7 uh, braided cable with a professional lock um, and a uh, um, breakaway device which is required in Wyoming um, and it's also got a deer stop on here too, which is kind of a cool thing. I mean, these things are really, really more versatile than what I thought. But when you set that thing up, and an animal comes up and touches it, see how fast that thing fires? I mean, that's no joke. I mean, just, and even if you've got it smaller, you know, like say like what I'm imagining for a, like a raccoon or something, you know, boom. I mean, that thing's done. It's really, really fast. Whereas a regular wire loop like that, it just, it's too stiff, it won't fall. So, enter the uh, uh, fishing leaders, okay? You can get these at Walmart. They are, I can't remember the price on whichever brand, but I want to say they're like $2.50 for six of them, okay? Now, these are one-time use. When, once you use them, I mean, they're twisted up and done. So, um, $2.50 for six of them is what... Uh, I don't know, 50 cents a piece, something like that. And we're just going to show you how to make one. So we're going to do, so I, I've used the 30 pounders and the 20 pounders. I like the 20 pounders uh, better. The 20 pound comes in a 12 inch length. And what we do here is we, so we got three of them in here. So we'll, we just need one. We'll set the 30 pounders, uh, you can get them in up to 24 inch length, so that's pretty cool. All right, so now let's kind of point you down here. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're gonna want the swivel end. Okay, that end is gonna attach to our, our um, uh, you know, our, our spike that goes into the ground. Okay, this end right here, um, has got a, uh, uh, can't remember what you call that, but that's the thing that you use to, to latch onto a hook or a, a lure or whatever. Okay, so we're going to want to go ahead and cut, cut that end off. All right? Take right hand, left hand, uh, throw that part away. Now, if you look, most of them have got kind of a natural, natural way that they're bending. Okay, so we're going to want to go ahead and use that. First of all, uh, first what we need to do, this right here is uh, slingshot tubing. Okay, so we're going to take a little piece of that 
and cut it off. This is the first one that's going to utilize this for a, uh, uh, a snare support, okay? In the past, I've just been using um, regular old tape, you know, scotch tape. So we're going to want to thread that on there first, okay? And then we are going to want to tie, uh, we're going to take our lock. Now our lock, I'm going to bring you down. Our lock is just a piece of this um, oil drum, you know, a steel oil drum. It's about 25 thousandths of an inch thick, okay? I don't think it has to be an oil drum. It can be, you know, a, a tin can might work just as good. And it's got two holes drilled in it, okay? And they are a 3 64 drill bit. Now those can be kind of hard to find at your lo local uh, hardware store, but it came in uh, a Dremel set of small drill bits, okay? So this is the new style of lock that I've been making. The old style is, is bent square or bent at a 90 degree angle like that. But after looking at the commercial locks, this style right here is a little bit faster and it's, it seems like it's just as secure, and it's just, it's just got a gentle bend in it, all right, with a 364 inch hole in one side and a 364 inch hole on the other side. So that's what our lock looks like. The commercial lock that I'm kind of basing that on is this one right here that I got from, from Southern Snares. Now theirs has got a, you know, one size hole here and then a hole with like a, it's an oblong hole on the other side of it. Now this snare is not going to have a breakaway on it, um, but that's kind of okay because I mean it's it, it's a 20 pound leader, so you would think that it, its breaking strength would be just slightly above that. So if we take kind of this this pre-made one right here. What we're going to do is we're going to put uh, get in there. Put the wire through one hole. Okay. Then go ahead and put it through the same or the the same side of the hole or the same side so that they're so it comes out and then goes right back in the, the, the same side there. We're going to kind of pull it through and we're just going to tie a knot in the end. It would actually work a little bit better if we had like a collar or something or a, a nut that was small enough that, uh, that we could hammer on there. But, you know, these are... Uh, You know, they're kind of expensive enough as, as they are at, you know, 50 cents a piece just for the leader material. So we're just going to tie an overhand knot in there and then pull it tight. Okay, now that knot is going to make it to where it can't come back through the lock. And of course, as soon as I do that, it does. How does that work? Now that is the first time that has happened. So we will double knot it then. Okay, make sure that one knot goes on the other knot. Maybe not quite pull it quite so tight, and that way it stays um, stays open a bit more. Yeah, now that's not coming through there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we kind of need to guesstimate where that natural loop is, okay? And it kind of looks like it's about there, all right? So now we take this tag in, and we kind of bend it back some, all right? So what that does is it makes 
the top portion slide real, real easy. Okay? So what we have here now is, and these, they don't really need a whole lot of loading, um, and that's putting like a, like a memory into the cable. You can kind of do it a little bit on there, but this right here is about the size that I've been using. About like that. So an inch, inch and a quarter across, something like that. Now the second you touch that, see how easy it moves? Way, way, I mean I'm not, I'm not touching that with hardly anything. And it's just, it just closes really, really fast. We might could try to load it a little bit more your loading really helps it to close, really, to, to like jump closed. Let's bring it all the way down some and kind of put some memory into that, that, that wire. Okay, now that's about where we're going to want it. But see how easy that closes? I mean, we're dealing with an animal that's, you know, a big one weighs nine ounces, so keep that in mind. So anyway, so there it is. Now what we have is we've got ourselves a stake. Let's pull the old snare off of there. Now this stake is going to go into the ground. Um, uh, it's going to go into the ground next to the um, next to the hole that the that the ground squirrels have made. And of course I didn't get that tight enough. Okay, so that's on there. Now we need to cut off about that much of it. And then this wire right here is just going to be an extension wire to be able to uh, to get us a little bit farther away from this stake. Okay, so that right there is our completed snare, all right? So now what we need to do is we need to make a support. We need to make something to where we can kind of position this snare anywhere we want it. If we just lay it on the ground, ain't nothing, I mean, nothing's going to go grab, you know, stick its head through it, just, just lay in there just because. So, and this is just regular old, you know, regular old wire from Home Depot or wherever. So now what we're going to do is above that, we're going to loop this around twice. And kind of cinch down on that so that we can kind of put it wherever we want it to be and it'll stay there. There. So now the idea is that we put this in the ground, we take this wire, we bring it down, and we slip it in that piece of tubing, and now we can kind of position that snare wherever we want it. So we drive this in the ground, we move this around to where it needs to be, and then now that snare wire is just stuck right there, okay? So you can move it back and forth. And of course, you can really see how shaky my hands are. You can kind of move it back and forth. Nothing happens, but the second you go in there, boom, it's got you. All right? So now let's go ahead and take a field trip over uh, to where the little run is that they've been using. <clears throat> where I caught that one. Stop by and visit the chickens on the way, huh? There's the chicken coop. Here's the garden. They've been getting in. There's Mr. Soup. 
they've been getting in over there by where the compost pile is, so let's go that way. So the light's kind of kind of bright and they go in here and then they come out on the other side of the fence so we kind of get it close here and then push our stick in the ground then we take this loop And we kind of position it about like that. To where it's up off the ground a little bit and then put something like directly underneath the ground. And that kind of acts as a chin up. So that as the little squirrel is running down here, he sees that, lifts his head up so that he doesn't hit his nose on that. And then his nose goes right into the loop. Then the fronts of his shoulders catches, catches this, and then as he goes, it pulls it tighter. The lock makes it to where he back, can't back out, and he's caught. Double check, make sure you can see that. Well, I hope you can. I can't really see much of anything with the, the glare of the sun. But anyway, so we'll keep it right there. The cool thing about these is that that sun's right in your face the cool thing about these is that the wind doesn't seem to bother them if you get if it rains that doesn't seem to bother them they work um, from the second you put them in the ground until the second you pull them out of the ground or until they make a catch and like I said I've already gotten three um, going into the garden now so uh, you know so it's it's uh, you know saved on whatever damage they would have done so again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.